Okay, welcome back everybody. Today, today we're talking about marginal gains, but I kind of mm. want to talk about like where Corey and I are in our life. We like, want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. And the, the concept of how like marginal gains affects what we're doing. I guess like going back a step, which kind of got us talking about marginal gains and this whole thing. I was working, I got invited to a Google Hangout call and uh, Neil Patel was there of all people, mm, very Patel. fancy. I know it was like, I was at an event and I was talking to the colleague and yeah, she mentioned that there was a, there was a call going on and Neil was going to be there. So invited me to that and it was really nice. He even said, hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. Like, Neil Patel said your name. Wow. I'm like, man, I've seen you all over Facebook. I've seen you all over the internet. I've read his blog posts. I've Yeah. He's a big dude. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. I mean, it was. I'm flexing, but I'm not because it was it was really just it was a call where a kind uh, gesture. It was a kind gesture. Nice, nice for him to acknowledge me. No, it was just it was a call with uh, with him, and he was just explaining his new app that he released on uh, Shopify. So it was actually really cool. I'm trying to think what it's called. Anyways, he uh, yeah he's he's uh, launched a new app. So I was on the call with him talking about it, and somebody on the call was like, "Hey, Neil, give us some gold." So yeah, and one of the things that uh, he brought up, and I found it was interesting coming from Neil because knowing you know who he is, like he's as a marketer, you know we constantly looking for you know obviously new ways to convince people to buy your stuff. His insight was was quite interesting because I think a lot of times when you look at like marketing and you look at business growth and a lot of these things, a lot of terms that come up are like, you know, growth hacking and like 10 proven steps to like running a killer Facebook ad campaign or hi, I'm so-and-so and I've spent $10 billion on Facebook advertising. I know what I'm doing. So buy my course. You can hit a lot with that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, when he was, he was explaining like, guys, there's no, there's no like secret sauce. There's no 10 steps. There's no like perfect formula there's no there's no hack the only thing that really matters is marginal gains it was, it was just interesting because like that it's it's so obvious and when you think about it your life is just every day is just another step in hopefully the right direction you know i look back on the last like five years or whatever the, the where i'm at now is from just a bunch of little steps in a certain direction when he said marginal gains i'm like that that makes total sense because even when with us running our businesses businesses you know i've had in the past there's never been this like one time this one event that i was like that was it that was the time we made it and i remember i was watching yeah well, i was watching this video on bobby hundreds and i actually met him down in i met him in la it was actually really cool. i was at uh, went to the hundreds Ooh, right, to their right, office it was really cool but it was no it was interesting like listening to what he said you know they're like oh like when did when did the hundreds like when did you Their make, when moment. did you make it? And even, you know, he was saying like, there's, there wasn't like a time where I was like, I can't like think of a time where I would say, oh, we made it. There was a time. Like someone wore so, something. Yeah, exactly. So someone, it was Drake. Drake was on stage wearing the hundred, a hundreds t-shirt and, and someone either he saw it or some, or it was in a magazine or someone took a photo and sent it to him. I can't remember exactly. He remembers that and he's like, holy cow, like this is going to be huge or, you know, thought it was going to be like, this is. This is huge. Have Drake wearing our stuff, and it didn't. He says, if you were to look at our sales, you know, our our, um, our revenue during that time, like spike or there anything? was no spike. There was no like nothing, nothing significant. And that, you would think that that would like having such a big celeb wearing your stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it's same thing. Like, you you think if you know Kylie did something like, and a lot of times it does happen. But um, it was just interesting to see like, oh, oh, Drake wore a, a hundred shirt in early days, and really didn't see like a spike or any major change in revenue. So that was interesting. But anyway, going back to like what Neil. Patel is saying is mm -hmm. is the fact of like yeah, marginal gains is there is no secret sauce whether you hire someone to write articles and do some content writing you 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 improve your Facebook ads and your online marketing you improve your ad creatives you revamp your website improve like these little funnels like it's continual things, yeah. things right it's never it's never ending and it's not you can't sit there and be like oh when I do this or when this happens or blah 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 blah, blah. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, Nothing and, major is going to happen. Nothing's like connected to a certain result, right? It's not like you can be like, okay, I will do Facebook ads and mm -hmm. I will get this result. Because maybe you're right. Maybe you go ahead and you launch a killer campaign on Facebook and it just crushes and it like brings in huge amounts of revenue. You have like fantastic results from this. But is it actually that Facebook? Is it that Facebook ad campaign that really provided those results, or is it all the work? 
maybe Facebook enabled that, that certain ad campaign, but it's all the work you did in the past around getting these articles, which created a lot more buyer trust when they can now read all these reviews and all these, uh, this, this content on your business and your product. Is it that? Is it the funnel that you, that the that the Facebook campaign has now put them into? Is it the funnel that they're now going through, is it which the you have worked on for the past year that crushed it, right? All these things you could, you might run this Facebook campaign like holy cow, like this thing just blew up and did really well. But is it really that Facebook campaign, or is it everything you've been working on for the past year that enabled that Facebook campaign to be very successful? So when yeah, There's when Neil so was talking variables. about marginal gain, I just I connected with that in the sense of like we you as like an entrepreneur and and these things that we do it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day and just feeling depressed and like what the heck i'm not you know where's the where's the money where's the sales where's the traffic like things just aren't working but get you have to keep that big picture and look at like where you're going i think youtube we were talking about youtube a couple yesterday a day before a couple days ago yeah like like uh, i kind of want to talk about our experience because i feel like that's more valuable for people for us we're like literally in the middle of a i don't know i feel like we're kind of a in crisis the of, <laughs> okay so we have like a business that we run together mm-hmm. called the fragile club and then we also do all this content together biggest thing that keeps coming up is just like self-doubt right just like wondering if we're on the right track, wondering if we're doing everything we can be doing or should be doing. Mm-hmm. Just like always like second guessing what we're doing. And I don't know exactly where that comes from. There's probably multiple things we could talk about with that. But it's interesting like when you yeah look back on your life. You know, if I was to say, okay, when I was 12 years old compared to who I am now and other people that we've talked to, you know, who run their own businesses or have side gigs or whatever. It's interesting as people, you know, get to different points in their life, seeing that their perspective change. Yeah. You know, when I was 12 years old or 13 years old at 14, whatever, I remember sitting there saying, I'm going to have a Lamborghini by 19. I will have a house by 20. I will be on the Forbes 30 under 30 by 21. Like, I remember just like all this stuff. And Hey, that's great. Having those huge ambition it's huge goals but it's and it's kind of funny how it's like as you age and as, as i age I, i'm, I'm as aging age, i'm aging so old now. right now mm-hmm. but like as as things progress and obviously as you do more and you you know you get smarter i guess you could say but like experience you, you gain experience yeah there's yeah. there's a difference between like yeah obviously having experience and just being totally naive as a, as a freaking teenager there's uh benefits to either one right there is because i think you you as a teenager if you can harness and like focus all that energy that you have you can crush it big time because you are like you're not weighed down by like past Mm -hmm. mistakes or like failures or anything you're very in a sense naive of like how much work it takes to get anything done and that's kind of an asset because you're willing to just like go for it it's massive it's massive asset the fact that the fact that you're sitting first off i mean you don't provide for anybody you don't have to make any money you have no bills you have no there's no commitments as a teenager you just do whatever do whatever you want Mm -hmm. i mean yes you could say okay oh well one of my issues is like resources i don't have money to like for ad spend or buy product or whatever i mean that those are like minor things if you you can get the money from your parents or like get a job buy and sell some stuff like that's like a part-time job would be enough for money is not anyone who says I can't make money it's like you could be 12 years old you can get a Shopify store for 30 bucks a month there I mean $30 a month for a Shopify store if you want to go online or you do or just buy sell stuff like buy sell cheap on Craigslist and Facebook and then just flip it buy stuff right on Alibaba and AliExpress Alibaba is way better just buy it on Alibaba ship it over and just sell it on Facebook, make tons of money. Money's never, money is never the thing. And it's, but it's like, yeah, being that naive and being able to like think so like that big and like, I can do anything. I'm not saying this goes away as you get older, but it's like, I think you, you, you think more logically, maybe, I don't know what, when, it, when you're older, when you're older, uh, I think you, I think because like, as you get older, you go through certain experiences as you try things mm-hmm. and you realize, oh, it doesn't come as quickly or as easy yep. as I thought it would. And it's actually going to take a lot more work than I thought I, it would. And yep. I think that's generally like the the journey that people go through or the cycle that people go through. And then it comes down to like, okay, I realize how much work is going to be. And I accept that because I do believe in my vision. I do believe mm-hmm. in what I want to do. And this is what I want to do. Whereas like when you're young and you're saying, okay, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a Shopify store. I'm going to do whatever. It's like the attention span is so small. Yeah. I remember I wanted to learn how to code. I think I'm 
major a o d a o d d o i'm trying to like i'm trying ODD? to combine ADD? ocd and add <laughs> odd i was major o, i was major odd and um i would yeah i couldn't focus on things for very long even though i had like huge ambitions and like really you know wanted to do some big things but it's like my focus level was zero so i would do something for like a couple days or a week or like a month max and they would like fiddle off and i think when you look at people who are really crushing it at the game at like 19 20 it's like these guys have been focused like they just have a high level of focus that they've gotten you know at an early age and being able to really just hone in on that so i yeah. definitely wasn't necessarily blessed with that but i've been able to recognize that obviously as we've gotten a little bit older here it's an interesting thing and when especially when you don't hit certain targets like if you know if your dream you know as a teenager is to you know make all this money or have this fancy car or do all these things be in the forbes 30 under 30 you're, you're focused on the wrong thing and i think mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing that I've one of, one of the biggest things I've really learned is that yeah when I was a teenager I was really focused on the wrong thing like wrong milestones that you're wrong milestones to hit. Yeah. like in, in okay why did you want you want why did you have a million dollars because oh you can say like yeah I was 20 or 20 years old and I had a million dollars like it's it's clout yeah it's, it's it's all about it's me it's me 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 it's ego it's the same thing when you look at I want a Lamborghini why do you want a Lamborghini oh so I can like put like self made on my car ego mm -hmm. it's all ego why well, do, and, and then like what then. Yeah. What's, what's after the Lamborghini? Well, and 30 under 30. Why do you want that? Yeah. Because I'm better than everybody else. I'm yeah. I'm one of 30 who are the best people, best the best people under 30. I think that I mean, means that I'm I'm a rare breed. I'm a rare breed. Like I mean, like, when I look back on all this stuff, like these like you could say goals or things that I wanted, I'm like, this is all ego based. It's like mm -hmm. so much about me, 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 me. Look at me. I have money. I have a car. I have. I got this award. Like it's really ego based. And then in the when, when those things like when you don't. You know, I mean, you don't make that million dollars by 1920 and you don't have that Lamborghini. Like, it, it weighs on you. And then you and you start getting this self-doubt. And you're like, am I actually, what am I doing with my life? And Am I actually as good as I thought I was? Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, it's it's good and stuff. I mean, it's, it's just, it's all growth. It's all part of life. You're just moving on and, and learning the next thing. But it's interesting just seeing how your priorities change. And like, you know, I have a brother who's, what, 15 or 16 now? 15, yeah. And it's interesting, like, seeing, you know, his his personality and what he's going through and, and things. Like, I, mean, I remember he was given, like, gave him, like, everything you could possibly want as a teenager. Like, as far as, like, you want to do an online business, it's yeah. like, here's the like, books, here's, here's the, the resources, store. here's everything. Like, yeah. give him everything. And he didn't really do anything with it. And, and you're sitting there like, why aren't you using these resources? Yeah, why aren't you using these resources? And I sit there and I'm like, well, you know what? Like if I had, I was given stuff as a kid too. I, you know, I think I had a laptop. Like I was given enough stuff. I had enough, I had access to enough things that if I wanted to do anything, I could have done it. But it just goes back to like, I was, yeah, I wasn't focused, wasn't. Well, and your reason for why you want to do something, having these goals that are ego based, mm -hmm. they're going to fall apart. Well, and there's, and there's and I, other thing too, is like, once you, I know you heard everyone says this, like anyone who has a ton of money, it's like, oh, money won't make you happy. And, and that's totally true. And I think to, so, uh, to yeah. some extent, for we, sure. I hit a point, you hit, we hit a point where it was like, okay, we have like some, some money, but it was also like, okay, even if you took this much money and quadrupled it or like 10 X it or whatever. I think I'm not going to be necessarily happier. I'm not going to change my lifestyle much. I'm not going to go buy a ton of things. When that happened, I don't know how old was it, 25, 26. I think when I had that kind of realization, probably 26, 27, something 27, like that. Probably, yeah. yeah. But it was, it was interesting when that happened and I was like, what else do I want as far as like resources go? It used to go from like, I will do whatever I can to make a buck. Like mm -hmm. it was like, I don't care what it is. I just want to make money. Doesn't matter. And what happened from that was like, there were just any opportunity that came up that, that equaled money. I said yes to, and yeah. it was, whether it was like building out websites, whether it was, you know, freelance work, building apps, building Shopify stores, selling whatever, buy, sell, Facebook, Craigslist, you name anything. Anything. And the and problem with that is there were way too many opportunities There's no came filter. up. There's no filter. Yeah. It was like, Oh, this can make money. Yeah. I'll do it. This can make money. Yeah. I'll do this. Blah, 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 blah. And then it was like, there's too much stuff, not enough focus, and you get burnt out and you don't do things for long enough. It's this vicious cycle of, of not sticking with anything because you always think that like yep. the green is grasser, that opportunity will make me more money. The green faster, is right? grasser. It's like, what opportunity is going to give me money faster? Mm -hmm. One of the things I've definitely learned looking back on this now is like, I look when now when I look at opportunities and look at like things I want to do, I understand 
very clearly this is not going to happen in a month. It's not going to happen in six months. It's not going to happen in a year. There's not, it's could probably nothing could even happen in like two years. Everything now, whenever I, there's an opportunity, anything I need to work on, I look at like, Hey, three to five years minimum because making money. Once you kind of figure, figure the basics out, it's, it's rinse and repeat. A lot of it is like, it's the same. And you can make money doing anything. Like it, it can. literally anything. You, you and that's, can. That's why it's hard to decide anything. If that's your only value, right? Yeah. If the only oh, thing you so value shallow. is money is like, yeah. well, there's nothing else to determine what you should choose. If you want to make $5,000 extra money, or you want to make $2,000 just extra cash. You can make $2,000 a month buying and selling on Facebook. No problem. It's when you, when you get rid of those. Cause I remember when I first started my first Shopify store with my partner, our goal was 250 bucks a day, which yeah. looking back on it now, I'm like, that was so tiny. Yeah. Like so tiny. But, but our thing was, Hey, if we make $250 and you're coming from zero, like that's a, zero that's, a that's a smart kind of goal because yeah. you are just going up, up a level. What's well, the next level? And the other thing was like, okay, if we could just hit $250 a day, that would enable us. I mean, based on the product that we were selling and the margins we had, that would allow us, that would give us enough money to basically quit our jobs. We could quit our jobs and we could work on this full time if we could just get to $250 in sales a day, which is really, really tiny. That was the goal. Yeah, yeah. We I hit this, this, we hit this, we could we could quit our jobs and we can work on this full time and work on other things. We I sat there saying like the product that we were selling, we didn't really like it. Like it was like it was it was we, it was okay, but we didn't we weren't like super sold on the thing. So you didn't believe in the product. Yeah, enough. I didn't believe well, it was more like, hey, let's we have this product, we have this business that we can build up and maybe like we'll build this up and it'll it'll make two hundred and fifty dollars a month, it'll make enough money for us to quit our jobs and this'll this will be the thing that, you know, pays the bills and then we'll It'll free us up to work on other things. What you don't realize is that if you start scaling a business, it doesn't sound like it gets easier. It gets way harder. It requires more time, more money, more resources, more everything. It's not like we hit this. We have to make, we're, we're making $2,000 a month and like all of a sudden we're free. Well, I mean, I think at, at, at two fifty that would be $7,500 a month. $250 a day? A day. $7,500 a month. $7,500. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. $7,500 a month. I mean, that, that was enough to like put a little bit of growth into it and then, you know, pay ourselves a small little salary. You know, as we, you scale other businesses up to doing, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a month, it, you're, you're sitting there and it's like, this is, this is insane. It's literally takes up your entire life, your entire life. You, yeah. you, you go from, you go from, I can just do this like as a little side thing. It's like, now I need to hire people. I need like, my, I'm getting like a hundred emails a day. People complaining. I'm getting chargebacks, disputes, PayPal holding money. Like it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Things are hitting you like so hard. And you, you sit there and you're like, oh, this was supposed to be a site that just brought in money that then, that I could then like be more free to work on the things that I love to do. But it's like, you don't even know what you love to do. If you're just like working on crap to just make money, it's, it's, you don't even know what you want to do. And it's not going to, it's not going to last very long. That's, that's exactly it. And that's like, when it comes to choosing and experimenting and deciding what you want to do, like it, it really is experimenting. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's also like checking your beliefs and like your value system, because if you don't know where you're going and why you want to go there, then you're just going to be going in the same circle. You're going to be going in the same loop, always mm -hmm. having the same problems, always having the same results because and, and, you're and, not going anywhere well, and, else. And some people don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think I had an idea as a kid. I'm like, I want to do business, but it's so broad. <laughs> I, I want to do business. Maybe I want to do online business. Like, it was so stupid. It's just like anything yeah. to make money. Exactly. I don't care. It's like, I just want to make, like, what do you want to do with your life career? I just want to make money, <laughs> lots of money. Like, and that was literally like just like a dark soul of emptiness. Yeah. I was like, that, that's about like, as, as much as I could define what I wanted to do with my life. And, and I think there, I mean, there are people who are blessed with, you know, they're 15 years old, 16, whatever. And they have an idea of like, this is what I want to do with or my like life. Their interests or like what yep. actually sets them on fire or like fills them. I mean, look at Marcus, Br them. like Marcus Brownlee is a great example of that. Yeah. Marcus Brownlee was, I don't know how old he was, 12, 13, 14, 15, I think somewhere. He was like 11. Super yeah, young, 12. super young. At, yeah. 11, 12 whatever so young and started making youtube videos and this guy did one thing mm -hmm. he just was like i'm gonna make youtube videos and you tell me what 11 12 13 year old can sit down in front of a camera and make videos consistently for years that is so impressive it's no that's so impressive if you, yeah i mean i'm sure you know marcus brownlee if you don't he's like biggest tech review guy in the world you can go on his youtube channel but it was interesting if you go on his there's a few people 
like Marcus Brownlee is very interesting. If you go on his YouTube channel and you, you know, go to all of his videos and then sort it from old to new, dude's just using like a webcam on his computer. He's got nothing compared. I mean, you look at his first video of when he looks like he's like 10 years old compared to now. I mean, it's night and day. You're going from like dude, dude on a webcam to basically Netflix, Netflix quality. It's 8K It's resolution. insane. But, but that, that's a good example of like, this is somebody who was at very young age, found something that they enjoyed to do and stuck with it for a long, long time. One thing, committed. one thing. Very committed. And and look at where he is right now. He's just mm -hmm. absolutely exploding. He's huge. It's, I mean, it's, imp it's so impressive seeing what Marcus Brownlee's done. Another person I think is fascinating, Steve Cook. Steve Cook. Steve Cook, yeah. the fitness guy. So he you know, does a lot of work with- He started um, with Gymshark. What's that website? Bodybuilding? Bodybuilding.com. Did he start with bodybuilding.com? Yeah, that was like one of his, the things that got mm. him on the map was like yep. he had a little course there. Yep. But he's an interesting one too of like, you Which know, he's, like a long time ago. he's built something incredible for himself. And if you look back at, same thing, go back to his YouTube and sorting old to new. I love going on YouTube and sorting old to new because you see, you see these stories all the time. You know, his videos when he started out, sucked like they're so so bad there's another guy alpha male alpha m the the he does like men's men's style I don't know him. same thing you go back to his and look you know five years ago same thing you're gonna see really crappy crappy stuff but these people they started they were consistent they stuck to one thing one industry and just crushed it and did a really good job the other thing i found was interesting is the time there's very few people when you go on these channels, like, you know, you have the the girl who did the whole van life and just exploded with yeah, my 24 Janelle. hours, Janelle. Mm -hmm. And you have these people who, you know, like these one-offs. Like, like they're, they're her first video. First she video. Like 20,000 subscribers. Her second video, she had almost over a million, over a million subscribers. Yeah. So I think but those people... Those you can't look at them because that's that's an anomaly. Like, yeah. It just happened. It's just the algorithm hit yeah. perfectly for that. Something happened. Yeah. But if you look at like yeah, Steve Cook, Marcus Brown, uh, Marcus Brownlee, I mean, all I mean, these other anyone, people. Anyone, anyone who's big. And you look at their videos, yeah. old to new. It's like it's they, when you look when you kind of go through and you say like, okay, where did they really blow Dial up? In. Where did they yeah. blow up? And it's like three to five years in is where you actually see anything happen. I don't know what it is. I I mean, I couldn't comprehend this as a young person. It was just like speed, especially when you get into like tech and it's all like growth and this and that. And like, we got to do crazy numbers our first year and like onboard a million users, like just stupid stuff. Just number, all based on numbers. Versus like, hey, I really enjoy doing this and I want to make this my life and I'm going to do this for the next five, 10 years nonstop. Yeah, that's what's so impressive. Like a lot of the people that I watch, they've been doing this kind of, they've been doing what they're doing for like seven, five to seven, yeah. eight years. And I mean, if you can stick to something for eight years, mm -hmm. that's so impressive. And that should really be like, if you're, if you're deciding that you want to be successful at anything, you have to dedicate like a decade to it. But let, let's also think about, okay, so you have people who like Marcus Brownlee, who got started at like so, so young, young yeah. so young. Most people aren't like that. Mo I don't know. I don't know a single 12 year old I could look at and who they're like, I can do this consistently year after year after year. Very few people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. I mean, and I think Gary V is very yeah, is he's spot the, the on. The next person that I that I that pops into my mind there because he's someone who literally left his father's company when he was like uh, I want to say like 29, 32, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. And then he he was like past 30 before he started his his next company, which was Vita. yeah. Well, another thing that he talks about is like experimenting, and I think for everyone out there who's not, you know. Who, who doesn't like wake up in the morning and be like, my calling in life is X. If And I don't really know very many people, if anyone who if is like that. You have to, that's a lot of work to get to yeah. that point. Like you, you have to do a lot of inside work mm -hmm. and like you have to know yourself. Well, and, and then think if, if that's not you, it's okay. It's okay if you don't know what you want to do, if you don't know necessarily who you are, what you love, what your passion is. But what you, you can't do is not try things. Yeah. And I think that's what Gary was with the point with Gary V was like that one of the things that he really pushes is like experimenting and trying things. And especially high risk, high risk activities in your twenties is one of the big things he pushes on. If you really don't know 
what you love to do. Well, the only way you're going to find out is by doing things. Well, and everyone has interests, mm -hmm. right? Like you all, you, everyone has that little thing in the back of your mind, just like being like, oh, I want to paint or like, I want to do coding or whatever it is. Yep. Like everyone has that in the back of their mind. And it's literally just like, okay, I'm going to take a class or I'm going to do like, there's so much knowledge on the internet, yep. learning things in general. So there's no excuse. When I look at, okay, things I've done in my life, it's pretty random. Like there's a lot of random stuff that's happened in there, but a lot of it also has like led me to kind of where I'm at right now. Even as a really young kid, I didn't, I didn't really know programming. I didn't really like coding. I didn't really know anything about it. And I didn't have the attention span necessarily to kind of dive into that. And my parents barely knew how to operate a computer. I didn't really grow up in a place where that would be um, it optimal. It wasn't like cultured, right? It no. wasn't like taught to you. It was so, it was so foreign. It was yeah. so foreign. And it was so in, and I had like an interest in it, but it's like, okay, now that, you know, I'm, I've now kind of learned, I went, I went to school for it, learned how to do some basic programming, you know, can build some apps. That came at a later point in life. And that came from just like trying things and saying, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah. So looking, at, looking back and being like, it's, it's so easy to get caught up and say, oh, I'm 23 or I'm 25 or oh, I'm 30 and whatever. 35 40 think you're starting over think you haven't really found what you want to do i would challenge that and say well like how much have you actually tried you don't know if you like being in front of a camera like this scenario right here if you had asked me hey do you like who in the world likes being in front of a camera i think there's very few people who love being in front of a camera more more people hate it than love it i would say you would not know if you like being in front of a camera unless you give it a real shot and i'm not saying like the first time we got bought a camera and put it in front of us was my most uncomfortable it was horrifying it was, it was, it was horrifying there's very few times i've ever been uncomfortable in my life number one was i was doing this course with a buddy of mine we would meet up at a cafe and we would have to meditate publicly in a cafe and if you know me i am super introverted i like to draw the least amount of attention to myself as possible and i'm here with this guy his name is puya and he's amazing Who has no fear dude of, like, has no fear people. no fear so we'd be sitting there and we're in a starbucks or whatever jj beans and we're sitting there and it's like he's like correcting my, he's like correcting the way i'm sitting and like okay sit up straight and do this and and then just like look ahead and close your eyes and and I'm doing this and I'm just like, I am so uncomfortable. And then he would start speaking out loud. The like loudly. Oh yeah, loud. Like our, <laughs> our intentions and this and that. And I'm just like, I'm dying inside. Like I'm sweating. I intend to have an amazing day today. So day yeah, or, like you know, it's like, I mean, it really is not that big of a deal. And me and me sitting there, like if I saw someone doing that, I'd be like, whatever. And then we went, we went to the gym one time and we we're doing a workout. And I, for oh, yeah. me, I go to the gym, headphones in, don't talk to anybody, just work out and I'm done. I'm like, go home. That's me too. We go with him and we're on the treadmill and, and he's like yelling, and, you can do this. And like, yeah, like today's going to be a great today's day. Today's going to be a great day. And like, you can do this. Like, we're going to make a million dollars. And now we're, yeah, we're making a million dollars. Like, Corey, Corey now, you tell me like, what do you want in life? I'm like, I'm so, so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> What do you want in life? It was just, it was so bad. I mean, like, you know, what he was doing was great, but it was like my ego and my Insecurity. confident insecurities were just like at an all time high. And I'm like, I, someone could shoot me and I'd feel, I'd feel better. <laughs> I feel better if someone just shot me right now. How this whole thing started, this is like way <laughs> off track, but essentially yeah, yeah. I was saying, Hey, I'll help you with your business and I'll give you some like pointers and some ideas of things that you could do for me to do that. I kind of probably, I need to know what your product is. Like, if, Hey, put me through your seven day course so I can understand what your product is. So I get a better idea of how we could market and sell this. So this is why I was doing this in the first place. And it was just like so crazy. But then, yeah, then another one where we were in a park and I take my shoes off and I started like jumping and then he would start saying things and then I had to like, it's her saying like, like repeat things. Well, no, he would say things and then I would have to say yes. Like after he <laughs> said it, so he would be like, he'd be like, you're amazing. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> And I had to like clap and say, anyways, I was <laughs> clap dying. And jump and say I yes. was dying. And he even looked at me. He's like, Corey, like on a level of like one to 10, how uncomfortable are you? And I'm like, I want to <laughs> like die. 256. 256,000. <laughs> Whenever when, when I finished those seven days, I was like, I feel like a new person. Like the fact that I can like, I don't feel uncomfortable as much anymore. Other thing that you were giving the other example is like being in front of a camera that's like super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But like the more you do something that's uncomfortable, if you know why you're doing it, the better it will become and the more natural it'll feel. So it's, it's you, yeah, you definitely learn a lot more about yourself by doing and not necessarily just thinking. Cause a lot of times you think like, oh, 
what, what I, this is what kills me inside. Like what kills me is I'll be like talking to someone and this guy was sitting beside me and he was talking about a product. I have this amazing idea. I had this amazing product. idea of this product I'm going to start. And I'm like, what is it? And he looked at me like, how dare you ask me what my product idea is? I have a brilliant idea and I can't tell anyone. And I'm like, dude, what, like, what are you, what's your idea? It's, it's a secret. Like, I don't really want to tell anyone because I don't want anyone to steal it. And I'm like, dude, I don't care what your idea is. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to, even if I did steal it, it's like, well, then fine. Like, who's really going to stick it out longer? And like the, the way you're going to execute it is going to be completely different. I'm like, it's funny when people get so defensive on their idea, thinking he were going to steal it. Same when you talk like with VCs. Yep. It's like if you go to a VC and you say, hey, can you sign this NDA? It's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like any VC is going to look at you and be like, why do you want me to sign an NDA? It's like, I'm here to invest in companies and people. Not necessarily. I'm not going to start this business on the side and steal everything. No, from you. it's like it's same. Like if you look at Elon Musk, you would be invested. You're investing in Elon Musk. The dude can like whatever he commits to. It's it's going to do quite well, I would imagine. I came and said, "Hey, I'm going to start a company making electric cars." People are going to be like, "Well, you don't really have much of a track record." And if then Elon Musk comes and says, "I'm going to start and make an electric car," I'm going to put my money with him. Yeah, like I'm just going to do executed. it. Yeah, he's he's done it. So it's it's just funny when people yeah have these ideas, but they don't want to share. And it's like you know what, just get out there and do it. So if you have, especially if you have ideas, if you think, oh, maybe I want to do a YouTube channel, or I want to make a podcast, or I want to start a Shopify store, or build a product, whatever, anything, just do it, well, and you'll figure yeah, it out in the way. What I find interesting about this is like the conversation about saturation. Oh right? my like, gosh, like, saturation! Oh, the market's just so saturated. Like I can't, I don't yeah. want to be a YouTuber. Or I don't want to do this cooking channel or I don't want to do become a doctor or like whatever it is, or I don't want to start this like fashion brand that I have an idea or makeup or well, anything because what it's is saturated. your intention? If you sit there and say, oh, it's saturated. What is your intention? First thing I think about is when somebody says, oh, it's too saturated. Your intention, I'm going to assume is just to make money because if you actually love cooking, or if you love yoga or whatever it is, if you love it and are that passionate about it, first off, number one, the most important thing is you're gonna enjoy doing it every single day. Every single time you do this, you're gonna love it. Number two is people are gonna see the fact that you love it and are that passionate about it and they're gonna get involved and they're gonna want to be, they're gonna because want to be part of your channel, and be your part energy. of your brand. Hundred percent. You know, you have a YouTuber, let's say like Mr. Beast mm -hmm. or or whoever. You know, these guys, they're, they're just genuine. He is who he is. People want to be part of the the beast community. I'm not sure what he, not, does he have like a thing? Like I know like uh, Logan Paul has the low gang and the Jake Paulers and the, uh, is I Mr. Beast like the Beasters? I actually have no idea. Mr. B the Beasts. I don't know if Mr. Beast has a thing. Maybe he does. No, I mean, you, you want to be part of the brand. Like you want to yeah. be part of the community. The two things is like not telling people your idea is silly because even if, if you start a company, you start a business, one of the most important things you need to do is get user feedback. And if you're sitting there like lights are off and you're like in your little tomb and you're coding away, building your app or developing like your perfect product and like making this killer logo, all these things that are like, that are just kind of meaningless because you just want to keep it a secret and then, it, then you're going to explode it to the world. And it's, everyone, everyone's going to see this. I remember like talking to these one guys I, when I finished school, these guys came up to me and they were asking if I could develop an app that could support a million users or something. <laughs> and, I, and I was just sitting there like, it was just kind of. Do you have a first version with a million users? It just already? kind of like took me by surprise that they were just like, yeah, we're not telling anyone about this, but like it's going to have explosive growth. And when we launch it, we're expecting a million users on the first day. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> What, what are you talking about? Like, it was just so weird. So I, I think it's, it's kind of funny when you have, yeah, you have people who've ne who haven't started anything, but they're, they're too scared to like talk about their idea and get user feedback. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I, it's just kind of weird. Or even like, like secret, like even if you have a, a brand, right. Mm -hmm. Or something, but then you want to come up with a new product and you're being very secretive of it. Mm -hmm. And even like, you won't even tell people that you're working with about it because you're scared that it will be leaked. You hear all the time, people are like, oh, you could just, you know, in instead of actually developing a product, like instead of the time it takes, let's say, you know, you have to like, you know, you develop your product, whether it's just a private label, using an existing product and tweaking it or full on like 
product development from this ground up. You could, before you even made this thing, like before you even spent a dime making anything, why don't you just like, I don't know, go on Upwork, make some, make some mock-ups. If you don't have a mock-up, just go on Upwork or freelancer.com, pay someone like 50 bucks to make you a rendering or a model or some mock-ups. Make a little site for 30 bucks, host like on Shopify for 30 bucks, put your mock-ups and stuff that doesn't even exist and try to sell it. Like I've done that before mm. and, and it's, it's fantastic. With I remember, no products. I remember we, we were, we had a product and it was, I was sitting there like, okay, you don't have, let's just like see if we could sell this before even having it. Just grabbed a bunch of uh, photos, built the site in like an hour and then threw all this stuff up. Like just super, super plain, nothing special. And then really was like, okay, let's try to market this thing. And then started selling units. I, I wasn't really worried about, you know, a couple of complaints if the shipping time takes a little while because I have to now get the product. But that actually just showed like, oh, there's actual interest in this product i can and it's sell worth this ordering product. like a hundred units now let's now let's actually order some product let's actually put some money into this so it's interesting looking at the different perspective even when i when we started another one of our companies we just did print on demand and i know like yep. print on demand it is what it is yeah your margins are small and maybe shipping takes a couple days extra to do this stuff but it's like print on demand requires no inventory there's zero upfront cost because when somebody when a customer buys it you get the money and then you just give a portion of that money to printful or whoever to then make the product and ship it out it allows you to first off you can iterate super quickly no upfront money and it's just like you focus on the marketing but i feel like that is what people People don't enjoy doing build the whole thing up and then launch it i mean yeah. if you look at brands like suspicious suspicious is a fantastic i think they're from berlin if you look that's a fantastic brand to go off of because i mean they're big on influencer marketing those guys use the default shopify theme debut like when you when you sign up with shopify you get a there's a free theme called debut installed in your store it's Version. so basic it's so basic and then what's and suspicious like i mean they've been around for i don't know exactly five years maybe longer somewhere around that they've been on for a while i mean they just use debut it's i mean i love their stuff brand's super super cool but like they don't even have a logo uploaded it's just like, they're so, like sold out half the time and that's the thing yeah. is they're so basic but they're sold out all the time they pretty much they'll do a drop Within like a couple of days, the whole site's just shut down. Everything's sold out and like, okay, guys, we have nothing left. That's a brand. They're focused on product. They're focused on the marketing. They're focused on building this thing out, getting as much reach and, and engagement desire, as possible. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're wanting like that desire to build. And mm -hmm. it's like, what is it called? Like not urgency, but kind of urgency. No, it's because like they, they allow you to like, they show you all the times when they have their drops that they like to subscribe to get updates and things like that. But it's, it's, it's just fascinating when you see these brands who you know are crushing it and, and you look at like where are their priorities. Because I've worked with other, I've worked with brands who just spend so much time trying to get like the logo and the colors and like everything's got to be perfect. And then product development and oh, I need to spend like 25,000 bucks to get things going and all this stuff. When it's like just build your business because that becomes barriers like the mm. like that's that just leaves because you're not getting sales at that point if you're just focusing on like yeah. the the foundation you're not getting sales which means like you're going to become more discouraged over time the longer you're going to take to build this stuff out like it actually deters you from marketing which is the hardest part and building brand which is the hardest part like yeah. when you sit there with your like squeaky clean little website that's so beautiful and with perfect, zero zero visitors and you're like okay now what i've spent so long on this website now what do i do no one wants to reach out to twenty five thousand influencers to get people on board or and we like dm 2,500 people like it's an, yeah like when you look at like what is actually required like once you actually get once you get I mean this is what's fascinating is like one of those businesses that I started you know a couple a few years ago it's like that business we kind of like stopped stopped doing it um because didn't really believe in the product and didn't really like you know like long term didn't really see this thing going anywhere didn't really want to build it out the amount of time like the, the website the product was developed in like a week Mm -hmm. The website was developed in like two weeks and that was pretty much done. And then we did not touch the product or the website for at least a year. And then yeah. once we launched it all in a matter of like three weeks, this is like full on like product development, launching a website, super, super quick. Then we just pushed hard on marketing. Yeah. All it was 
writing articles, talking to bloggers, like just getting content, content, content. That company three years later is still making money, even though it's, it's, it's a small amount of money because I haven't, we haven't touched the company in like two but years. It's consistent. Consistently makes money. Surprising. But it was like boring stuff. It would be like, yeah. I come back from my job and I sit on the computer till like two or three in the morning, just typing writing and things. typing and contacting people like just nonstop. And it was like, and this goes back to like marginal gains is like, it was just like continual, like more and more and more sales kept going up and up and up. And it, and it was just like, this is boring stuff. This is not <laughs> like, like you want to blow your brains out. I, I remember I was sitting there and there was going back to that company who like that company who approached me saying, Hey, can you help us build an app that can support a million users? And I was just like, no, well, I, well, not, I didn't say, I said, I said, sure. Like I'll take your card, but I'm like, I don't want to work for this company because this is, this is kind of ridiculous what they're saying. What was kind of funny is, so I said no to them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. And then I, but I followed them. Like I followed them on LinkedIn and I followed them on their social. Oh, I, I added the founders. I added the founders and it was like, kind of just like, I want to, I'm like, I just want to see where this goes and see what actually happens. I remember following them and I remember just sitting at home working on this business, just, you know, I'm sitting there, it's midnight writing my articles, yeah. like just contacting, doing emails, like just boring stuff. And I'm like, this is like, it's not that exciting. I'm sitting in like a basement suite and I've like dinky, dinky, apartment or basement suite what that's what it was yeah, yeah. and uh anyways I'm on, I'm on social media i'm following these guys and and i'm sitting there and they're like at like the cactus club like on the water with like a ton of cocktails oh, on the right. table and they literally it said like putting in the hours to get our to get startup our startup life to get our startup going and then like you would watch their photos and it's like them in like fancy cars or like you know out at the bar and it's, it's like all the like hashtag startup life and i'm like what in the world is this yeah that is i'm sorry that is not real startup life like, startup life has no ball and money all i saw when i saw this is i'm like i feel bad for whoever invested in this because they're just dropping these investors money on drinks like, anyways they, they 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 were they closed down in a year <laughs> yeah they were up i think they, were, they, they launched and it they only survived off of investor money I know. for a year so it's, it's interesting like you can get caught up so easily in all the fluff in this and i think the biggest takeaway i mean this we've just been talking about all types of stuff but one of the biggest takeaways when you especially when you talk to people who you know i think late 20s 30s whatever is you really start realizing that you need to experiment you need to try things if you don't know who you are if you don't know what you like to do the only way you're going to figure that out is by doing and by trying things but i think another important factor of that is mixing up trying with long-term success because mm -hmm. you can try a bunch of things but do not sit there don't sit there and say oh that didn't work out yeah. because i only did it for three months three right? months or i only did it for six months or yeah. i only did it for a year yeah. you have to realize when you're doing this stuff is like if you like it if you say hey i like making youtube videos i like doing a podcast i like whatever mm -hmm. anything you like to do even if you love it it's going to take time. Trying things is fantastic. It's great to try things. You're going to learn what you love and what you don't like really quickly. But when you do find something that you actually enjoy doing, you got to stick with it and realize this is going to take a long time. On our kitchen, we have like, it's like a high gloss cabinets. It's basically like a wipe. We've, we've turned yeah. our kitchen into a wipe work because you can draw and on it. And we just scribble on it. We scribble on it. But what we did is we, we've pretty much written out, wrote out, written out, written, written, written out <laughs> one to whatever, 24 or whatever, Months. essentially every single month. So for like two years, there's one of the things I found is like, this is, there's an interesting channel. They're called the daily talk show. And it's these two guys and they started a talk show. I think it was two years ago. They, you know, they have, like they haven't seen huge growth and, and their view count is kind of kind of low when you listen to these guys and listen like where their long-term plan is they have a 10-year plan if you were to look at their channel you could very easily get depressed if this was your channel you could very easily get depressed well, you would how, look, how long have they been doing it two years two, two years that's what yeah. i'm saying two years so if you were to upload a they upload a video a day too. These guys, Whoa. it's super high quality. It's great content. It's it's they very very consistent. Every single I think they're on like episode six hundred and something. Holy. So they've been doing this for a long time. If you were just a if you didn't have a grand vision or big picture of this, you could very easily get depressed and be like, wow, I've put out so much content. I'm not getting the subscribers. I'm not getting the views. It's like I'm not making the money. Blah 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 blah. But these guys literally have a ten year plan. When what we've done, like I said, we you know we've kind of put out okay phase one of what we whenever we do anything, whether it's a business or we want to start some new project, we kind of like okay what is the timeline 
of that we're going to give ourselves before we say, okay, hey, now we'll rethink this. And we've kind of done like a two year thing. So we've, you know, written out one to 24 up, you know, where we can see it really clearly and like a number for each month, a number for each month. And then we just basically crossed out every single month. So when you look at it and say, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for six months. I've been doing this for so long. I haven't really, not really seen the growth. Instead of focusing on the six months and saying, I haven't really seen that growth. When you look at that big picture and you can say, wow, I'm actually only like this much into like this much, it changes the entire perspective. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of times you have, you have a, you start a business, you could run that business for three years and see minimal growth. And then on year three is where you actually see high growth, high impact, and things just take off and you spike. Just, you never know at what point things will start growing no. or things will start making money. You just don't know. And that's where it does, does come back to like, what are your values and what do you actually want to get out of this? And what is like your, what is your mm -hmm. long-term plan? Because maybe it is sm smarter to have a five or 10 year expectancy. Like the daily talk show, their thing was, you know, we will outlast anyone. Like he says, he says, even if it takes us, like we'll pretty much just be around for as long as we're alive. And essentially people will just die or, you know, life will move on and, you know, people will cancel their channels and we'll, we'll still be there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, no matter what, with that kind of mentality, you can't lose, you're going to win. Yeah. And that's also a testament to like, they obviously enjoy that and that's a part of their daily mm -hmm. life and they like the process of that. And that is honestly going to take them way further than expecting everything to come all at once. Well, look at Matt Dewalla. I mean, same thing. That guy, quit his job. Mm -hmm. He gave himself two years. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to do YouTube for two years. Nothing else. I'm not going to focus on anything else. If I can make this work in two years. Great. What did he do? Quit his job, focus on YouTube, focus on one thing, two years, like pretty much put the blinders on any opportunity that came up. It was a no, I'm just doing this for two years. And look at him now, guys, just crushing the YouTube game. His content is so good. He is a fantastic example of someone who is just, and it, he's great because even look at, he's not like, he's not 15. He's not 20 years old. Like he's, he's a, you know, he's in his what, late twenties, thirties. I don't know. Ooh, That's don't know. a huge thing It's like, it doesn't, don't age means absolutely age is nothing. nothing. And if, if you're living for age, you if need you're, to reevaluate. If you're your sitting values. there saying, I need to be a millionaire by 30, I don't know if because that's the like, right approach. What, based on what? Yeah. And there's great examples. Like I heard on a podcast recently that there was this one woman who she had kids, okay, mm -hmm. but she spent an hour and a half on her business every single day. Yep. An hour and a half, literally 90 minutes during nap time. And she built a massive company that she lives off of. But and she's did it on a consistent consistently. basis. Consistently. Every yep. single day she's getting stuff done and she's prioritizing the most important things during that hour and a half. Like success, whatever you define success. And that's another thing too, is like, what, how do you define success? It's yeah. like for, because if- At what point are you going to call yourself successful? If having $100,000 in the bank, like if making- you know, $25,000 a month. If I was, I, I, you hear it all the time. It's like, oh, my goal is to make $25,000 a month. My goal is making $50,000 a month. My goal is to have $10 million in the bank. Why? What, what is this going to equal matter? to you? What does that equal? And even if when you have $10 million in the bank, like I, I, that's the thing, I, that's the, one of the biggest things I think I've come to realize mm. is if you deposited $10 million in my bank, because maybe I, maybe I sit there and I say, 10 million is my magic number. That's what yeah. I want to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You deposit $10 million in my bank. What are you going to do? What changes? Yeah. Okay. So let's play this out because like probably buy a, a nice house. We go buy a nice house. I'd go buy some nice si sick dope cars. I go, I mean, literally all it comes down to, I would go buy a ton of crap. Yeah, that's I'd buy a ton of crap. Buy a bunch of stuff. And my living, ex my living expenses would go from like basically nothing to a ton. Mm -hmm. And we'd go on vacations and do all this stuff. And you know, that'd be fun. And it'd yeah. be super fun. And it would be a yeah, hoo-ha hurrah for six months. Yeah. It'd be really, really fun. Yeah. And then it's going to come back to, it's going to come back to the exact same questions you always ask yourself. What is the purpose of Why my life? What is the meaning? up in the morning? What is the meaning of my life? I don't have fulfillment in my life. I'm not making an impact. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I much rather prefer to wake up energized, pumped, stoked about what's happening today, stoked about what I'm working on, not wanting to go to sleep because I'm so excited. I'd much rather be in that mindset making $75,000 a year than have $10 million deposited in my bank account and, and no constantly be wondering what I'm doing with my life. It goes back to the importance of like trying things to figure out who you are. Even when we, you know, the business that we're running right now, it's like so often you get caught up in the highlight reel. And I think that is a really tough thing for entrepreneurs is that you get caught up in this highlight reel of what other people are doing and you don't realize the consistency and effort that's gone into this. And that's why I yeah. love YouTube because yeah. YouTube, I'll go on YouTube and I'll, yeah, like view 
Like I'll see someone, I'm like, man, crazy good content. Like let's say a bodybuilder, Steve Cook. And I'm like, man, dude, so fit, good looking guy. He's got the nice house now. He's got everything. He's got his own gym, sponsorships with Gymshark. It's incredible. You go back and look at it five years ago, six years ago, guys using like a cell phone to record. And, and you're just looking and you're like, this isn't the Steve Cook I know now. Like everyone's seen the best year of my life or like oh, love best those year videos. of my life, right? Like those videos just, like, make me up. feel like crap. Yeah, but like, yes, exactly. That's I watch them, I'm like, everyone. I, I hate my life. did nothing <laughs> this year. That's just, it's a flex. Yeah, it's, it's such a flex. flex. It's like, look at me, I'm amazing. Life is not a bunch of highlight reels. Like it is... If you're working on a business, it's waking up, it's phone calls, it's emails, it's going to meetings, like it's draining stuff that is not like hoo-ha, hurrah. The hoo-ha, hurrah is when you get the big paycheck or you buy the car and you like post about it and it's like, new car, <laughs> bought a dope house, going on vacation for the 20th time this year. Like I have an investment property. I have an investment property. <laughs> <laughs> but this comes back to your values and why you're actually doing these things because yeah. like that's what's going to help you be consistent over lo the long term. For us, like mm -hmm. our values have completely shifted over the past couple years because we've really had to evaluate why we're doing certain things. Well, there was a time why you're being driven. There was so like re so we were we were making the most money we'd ever made in our entire life. Yes. We were spending very, very little. Like we've always spent very little, very, you know, strict to budgets. A lot, like most of our money we would save very little on spending. We were making the most amount of money we've ever made in our entire life. And we're sitting there like, why are we living? I mean, we the way we could have been living would have, we both could have had like brand new Mercedes, brand new top of the line cars, could have had a super nice, like, you know, two, three bedroom condo right downtown overlooking the ocean. Like, like literally everything. We could have had anything that we wanted. The optimal life. We could, yeah. have, we could have had that, but we're just still sitting there like, I don't really enjoy, you know, what I'm doing. I don't really enjoy this. I'm not finding fulfillment in it. And even I was sitting there like, even if you were to double my salary, because or, or double how much, the, or double our income. Even if you sat there and like doubled or tripled or quadrupled our income. And we income, actually did move into like that nicer condo or like get those cars. Nothing would act, I wouldn't actually be really any more fulfilled or happy because it, it was like, it was more so I wasn't happy with what I was doing doing on a day-to-day -day basis it had nothing to do with the money everything everything i thought though had to do with them i'm like oh when we hit this point then we'll go and buy that nicer house and then we'll get the cars and we'll do all this and then stuff they'll have this certain feeling mm. right it's really based on the, the feelings that you're trying to chase you're trying yep. to chase this like feeling of importance like, yeah importance and i've made it i'm proving myself to everyone and to myself and like yep it's just like this, this like high, you're searching for highs. You will not be happy if you're not making, let's say you're making $50,000. Like there's a, there's a study that was done and it showed people who, if you know, if you made, let's say $25,000 a year, the bump from $25,000 a year to $50,000 a year was significant. Your happiness level 10 X, you were much, much happier. You had less stress. You had less pressure. You don't, you're not in debt. Right? You're not in you're, you're, debt. You're not like paycheck to paycheck. You, you can pay for things. Yeah. The move from like 50 to $80,000 was quite significant as well, up to a hundred K. But what happened they saw is that once you kind of get past a certain point, like once you kind of went past like a hundred or 150, it didn't have that much of a significant, like if you're making $100,000, you making $150,000 probably isn't going to change a whole lot. I mean, maybe you save some more if you want to go in, in, up your living a bit. But like you start getting like, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Like, does it, does it really make like you, you have go, you go on like one extra vacation a you year? You have way more money than you actually really need to live. And I think at that point, there's one nice thing about when you make a bunch of money is it allows you to like reposition how you think. So instead of like making, oh, when I have the best job, then I'll start doing my passion when you start when then when you get all the money then you're sitting there and you're saying well what am i doing with my life like i don't actually enjoy what i'm doing and you get you're in the exact same boat yeah. the only thing is when you're poor you sit there and it's all money excuses it's like i need money i need money to buy camera i need money to buy computer i need money to buy whatever so that i can then do this so you think it's all resource limited mm -hmm. i don't have enough resources so i can't be happy and do what i want to do then when you get the resources and have literally everything it's like i got this camera, I got this camera, I got microphone, I got lights, I got I all have this a Shopify store. I have all this I have crap. My products, I have my people. Like, well, not even, not even business. Not even talking about business. Like anything. I'm just saying, when you now have the resources, yeah, to get whatever you want. Yeah. Th then it comes down. Then it comes down to what do I actually enjoy doing? Mm 
Because mm. now resources, you blame it on the fact of like, I don't have the resources to get what I need. I can't get an employee. I can't buy a camera. I have to work a job, so I can't do this full time. But then when you actually have the resources and it's like, okay, you could quit your job and work on this full time for five years. You could buy all the gear you could possibly imagine. Then it switches. It switches really quickly. And you realize, do I actually want to do that? Do I enjoy this? Yeah. yeah. Am, am I going to dedicate my every single breathing moment mm -hmm. to this? And like, what, what do I actually want my life to look like? It's a battle between, let's say if you have a job, a high paying job, so you're making 200K a year. You have, and you have a buttload in savings. You're now sitting there, okay, you're now trapped. I think you get more trapped as you go on. I mean, no, a lot of people are going to be super happy with $200,000 a year working a job. But if you don't want a job, you're like, I want to work on my own thing. If you quit that job, you're now not making $200,000. You're now making zero, most probably, unless you have, unless your your gig is making money. Let's say you have no money, but you're like, I'm going to focus on this for five years. So you've banked up some money, you've banked up a couple hundred grand in savings. So you have money to work on, you know, pay for your bills for five years. In that scenario, you, you now sit there and you're sitting there like, oh, wow, like I have all the time in the world to work on my thing. It's all focused on me, my business. It's going to, it's going to be great. Now you have a mental game you have to play for five years. You're probably not going to make money for the next one, two, three years. All that money that you make needs to go back into your business. And what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, you're sitting there thinking about all your colleagues and all your friends and all the other people in your entire life who have a paycheck and are making money. Even if they're making $75,000, $100,000, $200,000 a year, you're now comparing yourself with them. And you see them going, buying cars, putting down payments on houses, buying nice things, and you're butt broke because you have to follow a budget in order to live on your savings for five years. And you, all you sit there and you see is, my money is going goodbye in five years. Their money is going up. My money is going down. And then you start playing this mind game. Is it worth it? Should I actually do this or should I go back and get a job and actually... Should I just reverse everything I reverse just did? Reverse everything I just did. When when you're yep. a free bird and you're living off your savings and you're finally quitting your job and you're yep. doing what you want to do and then you're only doing what you want to do and is this what you want to do? It's a, it's a mind game. It's a serious mind game when you sit there and you see... Because it, it's like you kind of get to a point but then it's like you really... I mean, you, you are spending your money, like your money is going goodbye mm -hmm. while other people are making money, are saving. So you really need to, it's like, this is what I find so interesting about life mm -hmm. is it's like, there's no like one, there's no one path for anyone. Like the biggest question is like, what am I capable of doing? Mm -hmm. What can I actually do with this life? It's not like what is going to make me the happiest all the time. It's yeah. like, what am I, what am I capable of? What can I do? Because I think if we like adjust our viewpoint to more like what am I capable of versus what's going to give me the most gratification and like happiness, mm -hmm. then we'll just be fulfilled in like our Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Enjoy and, like, the ride. Try things. Yeah. Enjoy the, the ride. Because you, you're going to look back on your life. Like when you look, I look back the last five, 10 years, I sit there and I'm like, it's been nuts. Like it's been a while. Like I've done some, you know, tried so many things. My now perspective on the next 10 years is I'm excited for what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen exactly. I know there's going to be a bunch of new problems. And as it's like make, as you make more money, as you grow a business, as you do whatever, it creates unknown problems that you can't think of right now. And if you just accept like that's life, that is what's going to happen. And I'm going to accept it and we're going to figure it out and move and move and forward. And you don't have to deal with all the problems at the same yep. time. You're going to don't through. think about it. Don't yeah. plan it out. Don't think I, I need to plan yeah, everything plans, out. Yeah. Plans don't really go as planned. Anyways, we're thank you for joining this talk about marginal gains and continual progress. Continual <laughs> progress. Yep. Thanks to Neil Baby Patel. Steps. Neil Patel thank got you, us onto this one. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Neil. We're Corey and Kate. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment below. I'm actually curious to see. I'd love to do like some interviews with some people who, you know, are in that same boat. I'd love to interview people late teens, maybe even like, you know, 15 year olds, late teens, early twenties, late twenties, mid twenties. In their mindset. I, total different. I'd love to see it. I'd love to yeah. talk and just like get an idea. Everyone is on their own journey. You mm -hmm. cannot compare yourself to other people. It's just interesting hearing people's perspectives at different time in their life, seeing, yeah. you know, just seeing where they're at, what they're thinking. And um, yeah, it just expands your own knowledge of yeah. like what everyone's going through and what everyone feels and experiences. Cause that enriches your life. But 
you do not have to match anyone else's life. Like you are on your own path and that is why you're here. Amen to that. Yeah. I think it's a good place to end. Yeah, it is. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. All right. Goodbye. See ya.